Hey, yo, check this out. This is your boy, Havoc, representing Infamous Small Deep. And right now, you're checking out the Producers Podcast with my peoples. Crazy Jay-Z from Dos Effects is about to be popping. Hey, yo, 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 what's good, y'all? It's your man, Crazy to the Drazy, diggity Dos Effects. What up? Welcome to the Producers Podcast, you know what I mean? This is the podcast where I'm going to be interviewing some of the biggest, the best, the baddest producers on the planet, you know what I mean? They've done some of the biggest records you've ever heard, you know what I mean? And one of those producers I got on right now on my very first, you know what I mean? It's my brother from another Havoc of the infamous Mob Deep. Hey, yo, what up, Hav? What up, what up Tracy? What's good? What's the yo, word? What's going I'm on? I'm chilling. I'm chilling, bro. Like I said... This is my first one, you know what I mean, out the gate. So I appreciate I'm you. I'm on it. I'm on it, yo, to be the first guest. Word up. And you know, like, like we spoke about, I, I hollered at you about doing it a few months back, and you hit me back right away, you know what I mean? You was like, I'm on it. I agree with you type, you know what I mean? So, again, salute for that, you know what I mean? You know? So, yo, Ab, I know people know you. You international, but some people don't know you, you know what I mean? You've been on many platforms. You've done your thing. But a lot of people have interviewed you in the mob deep context you know what i mean of that you know what i mean but i want to take it from the producer's aspect of you know how you evolved into the legend you are on that tip you know what i mean if we was going to talk about putting people in the hall of fame of hip-hop you'd be in there you'd be in there twice you cheating for mob deep but then as a producer you cheating you know what i mean so just take me from the beginning like because you know, I know you born in BK, raised in QB, but take me yeah. from and what was what happened? Well, you know what I'm saying? You know, I was like you said, I was born in Brooklyn, raised in, in QB. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I took a liking to music very early, you know what I mean? Um, I met Prodigy in high school, and at that point I wasn't even a producer yet, you know what I'm saying? I was just still an MC. And you know, I but I, I always had that artistic side of me of wanting to create, you know what I mean? You know, yeah. um, you know I'm an artist by nature, you know, I draw, paint, stuff like that. Yeah. Just a, a straight creative. So in me and Prodigy, you know what I'm saying? We formed a group and stuff like that. And I kind of like was forced to become a producer because at the time uh, we didn't have enough money to really, you know, hire the services of some of the, you know, star producers was, yeah. that was out there of the day. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, I'm happy that it happened like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you couldn't, when you say, like, hire, let's not even go to when you could get the bread to hire them. When right. you was just, you and him was, let's say, just rhyming. You know what I mean? The, the music was in you. Was you just banging on the table before you even got to the beat machine? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? So that's when it really first started for you? Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. You know, growing up in the projects, you know what I'm saying? Everybody freestyling in the hallways and you know what I'm saying? You banging on the wall, you know what I'm saying? Making the beats like that. That's yeah. that's the earliest production that, that we so all So that was, had. that was your role. You was the dude. Right, Cause right. for me, you yeah. know, we all, we all, we all tried our hand in hip hop early. Like I tried right. the beatbox, break right. dance, DJ, right. you know right. what I mean? So right. with the beatbox, I was like, nah, with the break dancing, nah. Then right. it got to the MC. I was like, I can do this. You know what I mean? Right. So you stopped at the beats, but then you kept on with the ramen. So you, like I said, right. you got two. So you was, you was the beat dude. Right. So actually, you know, you know, we used to, yeah, we, we used to do the beats on, on, on the walls and all of that. Yeah. But really, you know what I'm saying? I was more on the writing side. You know what I mean? The, okay. I was more on the writing side, on, on the freestyling side. And, you know, I didn't really think of myself as a producer or I never thought that I would be a producer. You know what I mean? But I never ruled it out, but I, it never crossed my mind. What, what year are we talking? What year are we talking? Oh, man, we talking like 1989. I'm there with you. 1980, okay. You know okay. I'm okay. So 87. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm in high school. We 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 right. we from the same. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. so you you more taking the rhyming, and then when do you like start transitioning though to the beats is calling you like you get your first beat machine. Let's let's just jump a little. So, where the, the bug hit you. <laughs> so way before I even bought a beat machine, um, I didn't have anything. We you know say we didn't have anything. So Okay. I had a double cassette player living with my grandmother and I needed instrumentals to rhyme over. So I'm like, damn, I don't got a beat machine. I don't got no instrumentals. So I used to play record, play, record, play, record, play, record, play. 
until I would have like two minutes worth of a beat of something that I just looped up off of a chord play, record play. And that's what I used to rhyme to in the crib. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Just off of that alone. So if you want to talk about where do you think it kind of started, it, it, it would be somewhere like around then on a technical sense. You know what I mean? Okay, so from there, then you said, you determined, bro. For me, I I, I, I wouldn't have done no double tape. Nah, son. <laughs> My man down the block, he do B, son. I'm hollering that side, side. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that would have been me hollering at you. Right, so right. boom, you lick, up with, you lick up with P, right? So boom. By this time, you got your beat machine? What, what was, time. what what was, because I heard you tell it, the interview before, like you went over to Peace Crib. I'm going to let right. you tell it. So right. you go over to Peace Crib. So me and P got the, we, we formed the group and everything like that. So we always in his, we always in his crib. His grandmother could see our aspirations, you know, our dreams and everything like that. She was watching us closely. Mm. So we didn't have no equipment. So she must've said it in her mind, like, yo, you know what? Let me buy these kids some equipment. So she went out and bought us like $20,000 worth of equipment, this lady, like straight up and down. <laughs> his grandmoms. His grandmoms, Miss Johnson. That's crazy. Yeah, see, I, yeah. see, that's yeah. how I think, like, parents need to see what's good in the kids yeah. and then yeah. and build on that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was one of those moments. So boom, yeah. she she yeah. she hooked y'all up. She was a beautiful lady for that, you know what I mean? Um, Actually, you know, I never even thought she was paying attention to us, really, you know right, what I mean? But right, right. the whole time, she was on us, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So yeah. he was like, oh, I got some equipment, come to the crib. So, you know, I'm living in Queens. He lived all the way in Long Island. You know what I'm saying? In right. Hempstead. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. And so, you know, that's like an hour and a half journey. So I go all the way to his crib, which was nothing to me at the time. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even care. So I go to his crib. He got all his equipment. I see him already, like, already know how to work the equipment because he already had it for like a day or two. You know what I'm what saying? Is, what is the equipment? What does he have? I can't really uh, fully remember everything, but one of the pieces of it, it was some kind of task cam tracking board that she bought. Okay. And she, one piece of equipment I can remember for sure was the EPS plus 16, a sonic <sighs> keyboard. She oh, had that. She, we she, know that. You know what I'm yeah, saying? she bought that. Yeah, I, I didn't know what it was at the time. And so she had that mm. the, the, the keyboard, uh, and then some kind of drum machine. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't even know what the drum machine was. Okay. So we went, I, I went over there. Prodigy was already working in. I, I asked him, I said, yo, show me, you know, how you do this, how you do that. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. And at this point, I don't even know what elements really go inside of a beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I didn't know the name of a snare, the name of a kick. I just know the sound. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, but on the drum machine, it had the names of the sounds. So I was like, yeah. oh, that's what I've been listening to all these years. Yeah. Oh, all these uh -huh. years. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm learning the names of the sounds, like the gotcha. high. I'm like, oh, that's that sound. Like, you know what I mean? So it's a movie. I'm, yeah. So I was just learning, you know, and I'm just like, but it was something about it that uh it really captivated my spirit. Like just the the just the equipment alone and touching it. I didn't want to get away from it. I didn't want to yeah. I didn't want to stop touching it. I was working on it for I probably broke day. You know, what you know what's you know what's great about that story have is that the equipment wasn't even in your crib. So <laughs> right. for me, it's the in-betweens. Like, so Hav was traveling back and forth yeah. for an hour. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for me, that's where I'm at when I hear that type of story. But but listen, so at one point, first, did y'all make any songs there? Then once you got the so you started making songs there. Yeah, 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 for sure. I All mean, right. keep in mind before we got his grandmother bought the, bought the equipment we had made an album already before you know what i'm saying it was called juvenile hell other people kind of you know what i'm saying did the beat. okay 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 so uh, i'm already thinking y'all was y'all was already boom but that juvenile hell was already boom i got you yeah, yeah, so we, you wasn't even messing with beats at all like that i was i was messing with them a little bit but you ain't have um, no okay matter of fact it, it, Cause now I'm remembering, we had the equipment, right? And we was making the Juvenile Hell album, but I wasn't really that confident enough to make something with the equipment that we had to put it on yeah. the album that we, the first album that we was gonna make. I okay. did two, I did two, I did two, mm -hmm. but 
you know, it was like, you know, I don't know if it's good or not, but we put Which it on two were those? Which two were those? It was like Stomp Them Out and Hold Down a Foot on Juvenile Hell album. Okay. You okay. know what I mean? So, okay. And, I, and, and they were sampled bass beats. So that was me fucking with the Asana keyboard for the first time because you put the sample, you put the sample on the keyboard and they play like keys. You know what I'm saying? From the lowest pitch to the highest pitch. So yeah. now you could just manipulate the shit the way like nobody would have ever, you know what I'm yeah. saying, manipulated. So I did those two songs, but I wasn't really, really confident um, uh, about it. So that's why I only did two songs on the first album, but we did have the equipment at that time, but it was just me still learning it. You know what I mean? Okay. So before I even jump into what the world, in my opinion, knows you for, you know what I mean? I just, I think that's interesting. When you did those two beats, did did you was you rocking with them and did did P hear them? Who, who yeah. validated them for you, even though you weren't kind of sure about them like that? So at, at, so at this time, me and P kind of isolated ourselves when we was making that first album. We didn't okay. have the crew around or nothing like that. We were just in Long Island, just me and him, like yeah. mad scientists, just learning this fucking equipment and yeah. you know, rapping, and didn't have the. Uh, you know the the, the 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 people to cheer us on like the the hood. Like it's the, almost it's almost it's almost like they was like yeah we know our man's and them doing stuff. Right right right. And nobody was nobody was interested. I'm there. I got you. I got you. You already nobody know. Nobody wasn't really interested. <laughs> I got you. So yeah. we was just in there yeah. by ourselves really doing. Okay it. okay. So listen. So boom. Juvenile how we all know. Yeah you know I mean blah blah blah. On a, on a production tip. The infamous, right? I already know we uh, we could get into you know the story, fourth and Broadway, but let's just kind of jump jump to when you got to loud, right? Mm -hmm. When when did you when, when did you when did you let's just talk about when did you do shook ones? Why did you do shook ones part two? Okay. You some people got shook ones, they'd have been like, I'm good with it. Right. What was the process of shook ones? Because to me, that's your day one effects. Everybody got their one, you know what I mean? No doubt. So what happened was uh, we, we got to loud, got to deal. Steve Rifkin was like, yo, I fuck with y'all. Y'all can do what y'all want to. I'm not even going to come in here and tell y'all what to do. Y'all just do what y'all want to. So right off the bat, everything was on our back. Beats included. Right. It's on y'all. Right. right, right. It's on y'all. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm like, fuck that. We got to do this shit now. You know what I mean? So in my mind, I'm like, fuck that. We, we doing this whole shit. Like, you know, we're not letting nobody come in. But miraculously, you know, through some kind of connections, Q-Tip came in to, to help. Like, you know what I'm saying? To like the guy, the situation, you know, he was already a seasoned vet and we wanted him to come in to help because we didn't want to fail. You know what I mean? And I know Large P came in and it right. was all, yeah, got you, go ahead. You know you what I'm saying? Yeah. Large, Large P was the first project, you know what I'm saying? Where I, I learned mm -hmm. a lot from mm -hmm. him, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He was on the Juvenile Health, mm -hmm. I learned a lot mm -hmm. from him. And, but moving forward, I said, we're not using none of those elements. We're just going to do this shit ourselves. You mm. know what I mean? We got the equipment. We, we, we tried. We did two tracks on the Juvenile L. We, and those, were the, to me, was the best tracks on the album. So mm. we, we could do a whole album on this infamous shit. We just got to believe in ourselves. That's that. That's the meeting? That, that was the meeting. You know? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> that, was, that was the meeting. That's the meeting. I got Between you. Between me and P. Yeah. And, uh, you know, cute to uh, you know, the, the label Scott Free and you know them niggas, they they got Q tip to come in to like kind of oversee the project, you know what I'm okay. saying? Help us mix the shit and shit to make sure things was all right. He gave me a couple of samples, this, that, and the third. So we starting to make work on the infamous album. I make Shook Ones Part One. Now, the reason why we made a Shook Ones Part Two is because the first one, I used the drum machine and the sounds from that drum machine. Now, you know, sounds from a drum machine kind of sound hollow, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 that's not, that's not, a, that's not us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? We need sample based drums mm. that sound a little bit more gritty, you know mm. what I'm saying? And shit like that. Mm. So, um, Scott Free and Maddie C, the a rs at the time was like, yo, you need to get some break beats, like some sample drums and shit. So I was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Fuck it, show me where they at, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they would take me to like record conventions where people was, uh, you know, producers be digging for the vinyl and shit. Like you already that. know. You already know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I came upon a record 
called Vinyl Dog, and it had a whole bunch of different break beats on there already. So mm. I was like, all right, boom, I took that shit home. And they said, yo, why don't we do, yes, the, the first sequence is all right. They said, we, we like the content and everything like that, but maybe do the beat over, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, fuck it, what I got to lose, you know what I'm saying? So I got the, the record that they, they they helped me go get from the vinyl, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So yeah. I took that shit home and I sampled it at this, now at this time, I bought an MPC 60 now. So now, cause you know, I'm a little bit more advanced yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother gave us the equipment, but I said, yeah. there's some more shit we could get. So I yeah. got the MPC 60. Yeah. So I got that and I put that with all that equipment too. So that's yeah. why I started sampling the drums inside of there. I started putting samples inside of there. Yeah. But I still got the Esonic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, that drum machine that she got us at first. Yeah. Tired that real quick. Out of here. Yeah. We don't need those the, those drum sounds sound too like plastic. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Do you still have those drum machines? I wish I did. Oh, I didn't Hall, of, lie to you. Hall of Fame material right there, <laughs> bro. Man. You already know. I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking back then. But to so make, go. To make a long story short. Um, I did the, I did the, uh, 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 shook ones over, uh, sampled it with the drums, uh, a couple of records that was on the floor, sampled that shit, Quincy Jones, whatever, put it together and then manipulated the, uh, piano with the Esonic, the EPS plus where it goes. On the keyboard. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the same sample. Mm -hmm. but one is one octave up and then another mm -hmm. one, two octaves down. Mm -hmm. And then and then that shit just sounded like it went together. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, all right, fuck it, leave it like that. Boom, 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 blah, 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 blah. And then we did the lyrics over. You know what I'm saying? Change it up, just change it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then that was that. All right, but it wasn't, and that was that. Because for me, <laughs> that was, you understand, son? <laughs> what year did that come out? Oh, 1994. Okay, so we came out nine two. So we already out. So we we and, out. and my we, whole block and my whole block is rocking the Dawson pegs. All like, right, cool. Like I ain't even saying this because the interview. Like yeah. my niggas was crazy over that shit. Right. right. So that okay. was like inspiration to me. The, the be the, just to throw that in there. Yeah. When listening to that shit like back then when it was yeah. on, that was like yeah. my inspiration because I used to just be listening to it, and that's the hardest shit ever. That 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 Dawson Peck shit. And you know what's crazy when you. So you was listening to it from a yes. MC's point of view or a producer's point of view? Both. I was listening Got to you. it. Both. Got you. So listen, and you know, it's crazy because each one teach one and it's all a lineage. My my guys who did that album, Dead Serious, Solid Scheme, God rest the ble uh, dead, um, blessed dead, um, Chris Charity, he's part of Solid Scheme and Derek. I'm going to have him on the show soon. But um, they made that album listening to Hank Shockley and them, Keith Shockley and them, you know what I mean? The Bomb Squad, like, we was we was deep into that. We was listening to, like, yo, these, yo, they was students. So, but back to y'all, when we heard, because we out, when we heard Shook Ones Part 2, it was a moment. You know when you stop everything you're doing? And you like, yo, son. Yo, son. You know what I mean? That was a moment, seeing CMP driving in the, in the whip, yeah, it was, see, you know, the colors just went right with the video. It had a, so for me, I remember like, yo, and the beat was so heavy. But but let me just ask you, have like, I've heard you talk about it before, but the beginning of the song, tell me about what's cracking with that. Right. So everybody, they always go, because in the video, we like the stove. Yes. So they, they eyes associate that with the actual beat because the beat comes on with the hi-hats. Yeah. So in the video, when they sit here, the stove going, t -t 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 -t, they think that that's the same sound, but it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? But it's just the video director. That did that? Director, but did you really like sample the stove in the beginning? No. <laughs> oh, my brain. Yo, you understand? From just, from that day on, every time I hear a stove starting, I'm like, yeah. I'm like my beat. Shook what? Shook what? what? I'm in there. You know, you, know Yo. you know what it is? Because people started running with the story. So I just fuck with people. I'll be like, yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> Yo, one of the greatest. I mean, for me, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, that beat, you already know. You know what I mean? Like, if you didn't know at the time, 
when right. when 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 it dropped, you know what I mean? And then when you right. keep taking it out and then you drop it again and right, in the right, right. Yeah, yo, when I mean the obvious question, did you know have when you made that that yo, I got one? Because let me tell you what for me, when you're working and you're a young artist and you're like us, our story, yeah, yeah. when we were first culturing what we were doing, right. it didn't sound like what it sounded like when we got to Dead Serious. Right. If I played you some of the pre-songs, you'd be like, damn, son, glad you didn't right. put that on there. Right. But once we got to Dead Serious, we was good. Mm -hmm. So when did when did you, from juvenile, when did you trant, trant, like, no, like, yo, I got a new sound. Like, cause right. for me, Shook Ones and the whole album was a new sound. When did you right. be like, yo, I got this? You know, I, I really have to, we, we talking about the producers, right? Yeah. We gotta talk about the engineers too, because they they are some of the most unsung heroes because they actually, they take your sound and yeah. they, 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 they kind of transform it into legible sounds, that sounds that you can hear, like that'll, yeah. be, that'll be good to the ear. Cause in the crib it's cool, you know what I'm yeah. saying? They're, okay. like, they're, like, they're like diamonds inside of rocks, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, whatever. But once that engineer get his hand on it, he like, okay, here we go. Boom, boom, you like, oh shit, all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so the engineer, you know, he really, he really, that's when I was like, oh, uh. man, this sound is dope. So now I could do this like this in the crib and I could bring it to you and mm. you'll tune the shit up and then, you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's when mm. I was like, you know, um, we, the sound is the, a, a QB sound. You know what we I mean? had one of those, I, his name is Charlie Murata. I call him MacGyver, you know what I mean? Right, From the eighties. Right. We met Charlie MacGyver through EPMD. He's one of those engineers that was solid scheme. Like you said, once we got into his studio, he would engineer it to make, the, you'd like, yo, son, your face would melt off. You know what I mean? It was one of them things like, yo, you know what I mean? But yo, have, listen. So, okay. You, you do, so you do the, the majority, if not all of the infamous, right? Yeah, probably like 85% of it. You, so you do it. Yo, at what point, at what point do do does your phone start ringing off the hook? Like, yo, I'm the man. Like, people want it. Because everybody wanted to work with you, bro. You was, like, what, number 10 rank complex magazine, 95? You was the man, son. So um, what point does everybody knocking at your door? I would say probably it wouldn't be until, uh, you know, probably, like, 96. You know what I'm saying? Like, 96, mm. something like that. But, you know, things were happening slow. You know, I don't think people really knew that I was the one that was producing all of the stuff, you know what I mean? Because I, I marked it down as produced by Mob D, you know what I mean, or whatever. True, whatever. I saw that, right. You know what I'm saying? And um, and, and rightfully so, because, you know, like I said, Prodigy's grandma was both the equipment. If it had not been for her, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck would I be doing? Nothing. Right, you know? right, so right. I, I owe, owe a lot of the credit to uh, Prodigy's grandmas and Prodigy himself. Right. Um, so, you know, around like 96, end of 95, you know what I'm saying? People started hitting up the manager. You know, I think it was Chris Lighty at the time. And, you know, they started getting me little works here and there. And, you know, I mm. never even looked at myself as at a producer at the time, but I just was doing what I was doing. And I never, it never really uh, got to my head to be like, oh shit, you know, I'm the man or whatever. Uh, probably I was humble to a fault, you know what I mean? Where I wasn't even like really promoting myself like that. like I. Like I could have, you know, these days now, yeah. You know, producers, they 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 scream their name on the beat. Yeah, which, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, say, yeah. At least yeah. You know who the fuck yeah, did. Yeah, know yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Did, Marketing. There's, there's so much, yeah, that, and that's dope. There's so much production that I did that people don't know that I did that um that is it's almost criminal at this point. You know, what I'm let saying? me stop you there because I'd be criminal to not ask you. <laughs> Give us a gem. Have what is the joint that you produced that we'd be like, yo. Um, okay, for instance, like the JD Kiss Why song, like Why by JD Kiss. Like a lot of people don't know that I did that joint. Um, is your name on the credits though? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My okay, name, go, my go. Name is, oh, my name is Got you. You already, you already, you already. Uh, 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 Last Days by Biggie Smalls, that one, that joint uh, with that had the locks on it. Um, man, there's it, it, it's, it's quite a few, uh, a few joints with Nas. And why are those under the radar? Like you say, people wouldn't know about them. Why is that, you think? Because, you know, I, like I said, I didn't put no, like, name ID on, on, on the track. You know what I'm saying? And back at that time, there wasn't no social media to be like, yo, produced by such and such. Or they yeah. wasn't really hyping up who produced it. It just was a song by Foxy Brown. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, true that. 
you know what I'm saying? It was just like, boom. And then if you happen to look at the credits and be like, oh shit, such and such produced this joint. You know what I'm saying? Because at that point, I don't think that people recognized me for having a sound. Like, you know what I mean? It wasn't like you hear it be like, oh shit, that's a habit beat. It still was early, you know what I'm saying? To the trained, untrained ear, maybe so. I, I know what you mean to the untrained, but for me, I knew, bro. You know what I mean? Like, you know, certain swings, certain drum patterns, certain, you know, but but I, I know what you're saying. But so listen, so 96, a couple of years after, so who, who's knocking at your door? Like, cause I know you've worked with Shaq. Cause you know, you know how the ballers and athletes do when somebody's yeah. popping, they want to get in on this. So was Shaq one of the early ones you worked with? Yeah, yeah, Shaq was definitely one of the early ones. And he was, I mean, that shit surprised me. You know what I mean? Because I didn't even know Shaq really rapped like that. You know what I mean? But yeah. I kind of forgot, but then I thought about it. I was like, oh shit. So I, yeah, we went to his crib. We, I did something with him. You know what I mean? Um, so you get the you get the call from a shot and, and do you have the beat ready already have or do you no. you know how'd that go down? Back in those days, I used to just come with my bag of records and just go to the studio and make the beat right then and there. You know what I'm saying? I never even had nothing ready. I used to just go there and just the confidence level was up. I'm Yo, like, that's you know crazy. Mean? Did you ever get just so do, being that you put yourself in predicaments like that? <laughs> did you ever get to the studio and brain freeze nothing? Nah, man, because I, I mean, Word. yeah, yeah. I mean, nowadays I probably fucking brain freeze. I got to do this shit ahead of time. Like, you know what I'm saying? I would never like, show up to a session with no rhymes. You know what I mean? For me, like, if I got to have right. the beat ahead of time. Let me, right. let me, let me right. rock with it, son. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right, right, right. But you was I, a different animal. I think that when you, when, when you at that age, when you're that young, you fearless. Like, you know what yeah, I'm saying? True like, that. Man, fuck that. I'm going in there. You drink a little bit of Hennessy. Everybody having fun. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. You like, man, you gonna like this shit. Right, like, right. You bounce, you leave. Right, so, right. So you did that with Shaq. So I know, like, so you working with all these people. Did you um when you're working with these people, were you well as a group, right? Did P ever say, like, yo, son, don't give away the the, the bangers? You know what I mean? Did yeah, you ever yeah. wanna? Um, you know, so I remember P saying that a, a couple of times, a few times, like, yo, son, just get them niggas, that shit, don't give a this shit, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he definitely used to be on it, like, yeah, I tell this for us, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> did you give away any, what, what joint did you wish you ever kept for, 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 the, for, um, the, for the crew? Um, nah, to be honest with you, any beat that I ever gave away, I, I always felt happy to give it away, you know what I'm saying? I got you. If that was the case, then I'll never give away a beat because I always love everything that I do. Like most of the time at that yeah. time, I used to be like, man, I, I, I want to keep this for me. But yeah. I would always act like I was making the beat for myself and then give the beat away. You know what I'm mm, saying? Mm, because I can't mm. make it with thinking about somebody else. I always got to be like, yo, this shit for me. That's how I'm going to make it uh, to, to my standard. That's funny you say that as a producer. So you you create for yourself. For instance, like, I know, like, um, through my, you've worked with, what, Faith? Because uh, I yeah. just want to segue. You work with Faith and Mac Wiles, right? Yeah. So yeah. on a producer tip, so on a producer tip, you don't, you're not thinking, like, oh, I'm about to rock something out for Faith. Let me, you just make what you make, and if she like it, she like it. Right, right. Because yeah. in my mind, when they call me for a track, I'm thinking that they want me. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that they want me to cater to them. Mm. You know what I mean? And, mm. and sometimes when I did do that, that was a huge mistake. Because mm. they don't want that. They don't want something that I think that they want. They want what I'm gonna, what I would make Continue. for me. Mm. So I would just for me, and then I'm like, oh, I don't want to give it away because I, I I fell in love with it because it was for me. But I forgot I have a job to do, and I and then I give the beat away. Do you when when you done? Because when I was checking out your your your, your damn history, I'm like, son, this guy's crazy. Do you do you like working on RB joints? Cause I, I'm thinking, yo, you could have you should be doing more RB right. joints. Do you even rock with that or no? I always wanted to do more RB than anything. I mean, you know, I fell in love with RB before I fell in love with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Just growing up as a kid. You mm. know what I mean? Uh just Word. Music, yeah, just music in general. I, you know, I love you know the shy lights, the blue magics, all of them. You know, I, I was that that was my shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I used to listen to that as a kid, like just like with mixtapes and shit. Oh, okay, you know okay, I mean? okay. So I loved R&B, but at that time, I didn't have the confidence to uh, make an R&B record. I, I thought I didn't have the tools necessary to make an R&B beat when all R&B beats was back then was just 
hip hop beats with some strings behind the shits. You know what I'm you saying? You already that's know what that's what Puff did. That's what Puff did with the Mary joint. <laughs> like he cracked the code. There was there was there was mixtapes. He did a because right. from our era right. it was a it was a blend. It was a right. blend. You get the right. acapella, you throw on the blah blah blah. Right. Dun, 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 you know what I mean? Right. That was it. You threw some strings. I, when I heard that. those joints, I was like, yo, half could have did shit on Mary album. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So well, yeah. yeah, man. So yeah, I, so do you? So do you? I mean, I know times have changed. You, you. Yeah. I don't even know if there's R and B, quote unquote, out right. like that anymore. So, but you are open to. So I didn't know. That's interesting. So you've never like, let's say Beyonce, throw her some beats, or you know what yeah. I mean? I, today, now, like I'll produce for fucking anybody. You know what I mean? If you give me the yeah. shot. I mean, I just love music in general. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. I might not fuck with no heavy metal, you know what I'm saying? But, I'm with you. I'm the same but, way. You know, music, I, lo I love music. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it might be pop, but I might like that pop song. You know what I'm saying? Nah, I love, I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Right, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We love music. So, you know, yeah. you know I, I would try my hand in, you know, almost anything these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you go in, in terms of, getting your music out there like a dude of your stature do you make beats and look for play or send them out or do right. people contact you you know because a younger dude got to do it a different way a vet do it a different. what's your process uh my process is like it's half and half you know what i'm saying mm. sometimes i'll track down the artists and and, mm. and try to get them tracks and sometimes you know artists they they hit me up you know what i'm saying they they hit mm. me up they be like yo i want some music blah 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 like you know i just did uh, maybe like a year ago, something like that. I did something for Conway. You know, he he was Griselda. I love that joint. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They hollered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hit him in the track. They ho okay. You know what I'm saying? And I and I did a, a you know a little chorus to it, and that's the shit I love. You know what I mean? And I, that's what I you know. So I appreciate when some of the new cats they come and they hit me up and they still fuck with you know our music. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely. So when you're rocking, um. When you're rocking with these new dudes like that, do they do they know the lineage? Of course they do, right? They yeah, they I, know. I, I assume that they that they know the lineage and that that they did their homework because that's the mm -hmm. only reason why they even coming in this direction. Mm -hmm. So you know, like I said, you know, I appreciate it when they when they come towards this direction and they do mention stuff to me that shows me that yeah, they they did the knowledge already. They 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 know what time it is. You know what I mean? Because they 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 praise us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, I appreciate it to the mm. fullest. Yo, have so listen. Okay, you're doing because from you know me as a fan or whatever, right? You 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 hear with the, the infamous joint, right? Yeah, I know a lot of stuff happened, right? Mm -hmm. How much how much time before before like the the second the second album, right? Did you did you musically change? Because I, I kind of from a fan, I could see like you were doing like more samples of like, you know, Scarface and yeah. you know what I mean? Like what happened? So you saying Growth. so you saying between infamous and then the next album what changed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, um for one, you know, a few of our peoples was started dying, you know. I know, I know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Put us in like a little bit of a dark place. And um it was a uh, it, it, it was a challenge because if you make an album the, the infamous album and it shit goes gold and they like okay now make another one it's like fuck you know what I'm saying you kind of scared so I think I kind of like uh, I don't think I changed but I think that I kind of went darker to make it even more grittier you know what I'm saying I'm like yo fuck it this is what they want so I'm now I'm like listening to new sounds like orchestras you know, and organs and, and, and stuff like that. Like, you know, really ominous sounds is what I was looking for. Before, I didn't know I was looking for. I was just finding it and I was grabbing the ominous sounds from out of it. But now I'm focused, like, just give me ominous music, ominous mm. samples. That's all I'm fucking with. Um, pay attention to everything around you. You know what I mean? Because I'm mm. not in the projects every day no more. So mm. now I got to just pay attention to everything that's around me, even if it's just watching the fucking TV or watching a DVD. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. I'm like, oh, mm. shit, we watch Scarface all the time. Wait a mm. minute. Nobody never used that beat right there. Hold on. Bring the VCR in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Sample mm. that shit. And um, so I don't think it changed my, my production style, but I believe that I became more focused on mm. a sound. That's the is it is it um hell on earth is that drop a gem on them, 
that joint oh, on there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Drop a gem on the- We thing. already know like the history and the controversy, yeah. but I, I just want to focus on that. To me, what was it? The snare? Is that the snare? Yeah, you know, uh, you and know, then Q- the piano, yo. Right, what, what's right. up with that joint, man? Talk Q-tip, to me. Q-tip made me fall in love with the drums, like you know what I'm saying. And 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 the snare was always like, my snare had to be popping. Like it was Chris. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> but you, but you remember Charcoal Quest music, right? They snare yeah, be yeah, popping out the fucking speaker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was, so I I I, I always followed. Q-tips lead on that. And I said, man, my snare's always gotta be like this. So by, by the time I got to 1996, I'm already making my fucking snares. I want my snares to pop every time, every time, every time. So and how you get it to pop like that as a producer? Like what 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 is it? Um, um you know, it's all you know, when you truncate it, when you when you when you um when you chopping the, the beginning and seeing how much you're gonna leave at the end or how much you're gonna take off the end. It's mm. all in that, you know what I'm saying? Do, are, you, are you layering it? You know you what know, I mean? Back then, back then, I didn't even layer my samples at that time. I didn't even layer them yet. I'm just searching for fucking snares, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I'm listening to Mad Records. I'm like, oh, I just heard a snare there. So uh-huh. I'll grab that off the vinyl, you know what I mean? And you know, a lot of snares that's off of vinyl, they just sound warm and and and, and, mm. and thick and they, and, they, and they pop based on the way that you uh, uh, truncate it, but also, like I said before, that engineer, he bring the life out of a snare. Yeah, but he wouldn't be able to if you didn't find it first, you know what I mean? Like you said, it's a diamond in the rough and then blah, 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 you know what I mean? But damn, son, so you must, like, as a producer, you probably, you got to go through tons of records then, you know what I mean? Like, it got to be, you, is you, do you got a stupid collection or you one of those dudes have? Like, you got a uh, crazy you know, collection? I, like, you know, sometimes I'll have a crazy collection and then I won't, like, because after a while, I'm throwing shit away. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, yeah? Yeah, I can't have the, the, the shit all cluttered up. Like, I got some vinyls in here now, but they, they I just moved. So, but I got some vinyl that I always keep. And sometimes um, I listen to vinyls like maybe 20 times. Mm. Like, I'll go through a batch of records 20 Rinse times. Them. And yeah, then you... because you, you never know. Because one day you might hear something different that you didn't hear the other day. You know what I mean? Mm. But mm. once I exhausted all of that, the records got to go. Mm. Uh, just another just a nostalgic question do you have the same batch of records that you did the infamous on and all that's gone hell yeah that's, that's it's gone right yeah i got you i got you so when you're doing let's say um so you're moving on right you're doing you're doing all these all these songs for the group is there any time where you 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 want to stop and just maybe only produce or, you know, you know what I mean? Or was it easy to balance both? Um, let, let, like, say, for instance, let's say when um when, when P got locked up or something like that, you know what right. I mean? Like, you know, obviously that would put the group on hold, you know what I mean? So right. what were you doing during that time? Was you like, all right, I could produce more now? Yeah, d- during that time, I didn't know what the fuck I was really going to do. You know what I mean? I was really uh, just trying to, find a way like you know what I mean like prodigy's gone of course you know life gotta go on while he's gone mom deep is at a standstill the show slowed up the show slowed up pardon the shows the shows they they slowed up but I was still was able to perform you know what I mean I I performed overseas mostly overseas performed went with Noid Uh, we performed you know quite a few places but really during that time when when P was locked up I felt really I was not creative. I didn't feel creative mm. at all. It was like, I had like a fucking uh, mental block, like a beat block, a mental block. Mm. Something was blocking. I didn't feel creative. I was trying and trying. And it was mm. just like, my brain was handcuffed. Like it was the weirdest fucking feeling in the world. Mm. I don't know if I could go back during that time, I, I probably would try to shake it off. But yeah, yeah. it was just something that was really just, just blocking me. I didn't have no clarity. You know, and I don't think it had anything. It, it, it probably did have a lot to do with Prodigy being locked up, but it, it just something was about that era. I think those whole three years was in fucking retrograde for me, but that's you know, I, I got through it. Well, listen, so not to because I didn't want to um leave drop a gem on them. So you got the snare, right? The yeah. piano. What's what what happened? Um, how, how did you know when, when when I made that song, you you know the history of why we made the song. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, 
um, so I, I made the song. I wanted to make something that was like kind of hype. You know mm. what I'm saying? With mm. the pianos in there mm. still, you know, fucking with the piano grooves. Mm. And then getting a little bit, like a little bit of a Aretha Franklin feel in there. You know what I'm saying? Like with mm. the, you know, the singing in the background. And then, um, you know, of course, make the drum swing. So, you know, that's what I did. And and at that at that point, I was pretty much in tune with being a producer now. Like, I think I had all the elements. I think I knew what to do mm. at the time. I, at mm. least I thought I did. But, you did, you know, dog. You did. I had, I, had a, I, had a, I had a recipe at that point. Uh, uh. Yo, I have one of my favorite joints is Right Back. Right Back. Yo. Back. It's two right backs, right? But there was one right back that was on the infamous album, and then there was another one we used for a soundtrack. The soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Set it off. Set it off, right? Mm -hmm. Set it off. Uh, it was something, it was like a basketball movie. Sunset. It was, yeah, with Fredro, I think, was in there. Yeah, somebody. Sunset Park. Sunset Sunset Park. Park. Sunset Yo, Park. that track. What was it on the album? It wasn't was on it? our album, but it was on it was on Sunset Park. That's when yo have that's when I knew y'all was <laughs> dope. I was like, these dudes are just giving away gems. This is crazy. I knew y'all was different when I'm like, all right. And I know, and I understand too, because back then, soundtracks, you had to come correct. You know what I mean? And so you, you was, yeah, yeah, friend. those was a good check. So you gave them a gem for real. Yo, yeah. yo, that joint, but you could have doubled back and put it on the album though, no? I, I, on I, a different I, one. I, I probably could have, but you know, at the time, I wasn't even really, you know, I was just like, all right, fuck it, that's for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, boom, boom. I didn't even read, you know, they, they wanted to do a video for it and all of that. And now when I look back on it now, it's very special to me. You know what I mean? Like, the beat is just raw. Like, that's you know the beat is raw. Uh, Dr. Dre ended up using it one on, on an album, too, that that beat, doom, doom, explosive. Doom, 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 doom. That's what that was? <laughs> yeah, explosive. So is that a, is that a sample? So that's a sample. Yeah, it's a sample. It's a uh, sample. Mm, 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 mm. When you hear one, you hear one, right? You just know. It. You just know it. You just. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I I heard it, and um, you know, it just grabbed me right away. You know what I mean? It just grabbed me. I was like, "Fuck it, man." You know what I mean? It was an obvious sample. You know, I didn't you know manipulate it like that, but. You know, I was like, damn, this shit is funky right here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, damn. when you hear it, when you get a sample, is it almost like, I hope nobody else got this? Is it one of those moments? <laughs> it's Hell like, yeah. oh, shit. Uh, Let uh, me turn uh, it down low. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 these days, I'll be fucking Googling shit to make sure nobody right. don't got that shit. Like, right. sometimes if somebody already got it, I'll be like, fuck it, man. They're not gonna freak it like this. You know what I mean? That's what it is nowadays. Like, you know, everybody. You know, the sample's for everybody now. You know what I'm saying? This dude can have it. You can have it. And it's like, you know, who do, whoever do what to it. You know what I mean? It's not who do it first. It's who do it best. You know what I mean? And, there you go. And, and just on another tip that you talked about sampling, I was talking to my man who's a producer. And because me, I'm always looking for beats, right? Yeah. But what I, the thing that I've been running into is dudes ain't really sampling. They're right. doing whatever they're doing and just doing a drum pattern over and then it's right. boom or whatever. So... With you, when you was doing all those samples and then you learned of, you know, publishing, you got to pay out and all that. Did that change how you started producing? Like, yo, I'm not even going to sample that. Oh, uh, nah, nah, it, it didn't, it didn't stop me from sampling. And of course, you know what I'm saying? As a producer, you get sample shamed, right? Like people be like, oh, that's a sample. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I never gave a fuck about that shit because I was like, yo, this is what we do. Uh, and then the samples, most of the time, they don't cost that much to clear. You know mm. what I'm saying? And mm. they probably, if they do take something, they deserve it anyway. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it's like, fuck it, it was theirs first. And, you know, we over here manipulating and using it. It didn't stop me. Because mm. I think that takes away from my perspective, takes away from the soul of it, what we was trying right. to do anyway. You know what I mean? Right. Or, or cause I, and then like Dr. Dre, he might not want to go that right. He might want to replay the joints, have it replayed. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Have you ever gone that route? Ha had any joints um, replayed? A handful of times, a handful uh. of times, not many, um, because it always sounds different and not, not the way that, you know, the record sounds, but yeah. sometimes you have to do that. Um, like I said, I did it a handful of times and, um, you know, I appreciate the way Dr. Drake did his shit, like sometimes playing things over and stuff like that. 
still mm -hmm. make it sound dope. But I think it's room for all of it, sample base and non-sample base. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As long as you mm -hmm. make it sound good. Mm -hmm. Yo, Hab, when you was telling me like with the records you grew up on, did you, have you ever reached back to those type of records? Is there a, like a, a platform, a genre that you go to? I mean, yeah. every now and then, you know I mean? Uh, every, like I said, every now and then, every once in a while, I go back to those records and I listen to them again. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And even if I'm not going to sample it, at least just get the vibe of what they was doing. Like, you know okay. what I'm saying? What they was doing with the drums, what they was doing with the bass, the guitar, the pocket yeah. that they was in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I just listened to it for inspiration, not even yeah. to sample it. I'd be like, damn, these motherfuckers was bad. Like, yeah. they, they made samples without even knowing they was how? making it. How? How? What was they smoking? Right. They was, smoking? <laughs> was making, they was making samples. Yeah. <laughs> When you listen to a record and then you get down to where you find that drum kick and that, yeah. you, and, and you know you it's some dude just rocking out and you like Yo, right. Son, what You're was like, you what thinking, the son? We <laughs> <laughs> don't even know. We right. don't even know. Yo, have one of my favorite records from y'all is Quiet Storm, and you already know. I'm sure you perform that all the time in the show. That's a staple no with, with with Queen B. Can walk me through what, what was how, when how. <laughs> so, so one day I was in the crib. Um, I'm just there, you know what I'm saying, working on beats and shit. And I felt like I exhausted all samples, listened to every record in my stash. Mm. And I'm like, damn. And I had this Sugar Hill um, record there. And I'm like, nobody's not sampling this shit. And nobody's mm. not going to use it. I, I know I'm not going to sample it, but I'm like, fuck it. Let me just try something different. So I was like, fuck it. Let me just sample it. Cause I I had I was tapped out. I didn't have no more samples or whatever. What's Sugar Hill record? What do you mean? What do you mean? It was White Lines. Oh, okay. Right. White. So I got the White Lines record. I mean, you look at it, you, we we looked at White Lines records a million times. We not sampling it. We just right. it's just there. You know what I mean? Mm. So I said, you know what, fuck it. I don't got nothing else to sample. So I said, let me sample this shit. So I sampled it. I said, let me slow it down. So I slow it down. I'm like, yo, this shit don't sound bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it I'm don't like, even sound the same. <laughs> it worked. I no. slowed this shit down. So boom, I slow this shit down and I loop it. And I'm like, all right, let me throw some like some keys to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a trained keyboard player, but we know the tones and we know how they sound. We know what sounds good with what. Mm. So I play the keys. Dun, dun. So boom, I make the beat, leave it there. Mm. He didn't do nothing with it. But Prodigy used to come to my crib all the time and go in the basement and just listen to the beats that I would be making. Like, you know, cause he, mm. he that's how close he was. He could just mm. come in my house and just turn on the computer and play some mm. beats. Mm. And then one day I came downstairs he was like, yo, have what the fuck is this? What is this? <laughs> he like, yo. yo, he like, yo, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, I'm like, it's just some shit I made, whatever, whatever. So he was like, yo, I want this shit. It's a movie. So he he does the whole song to it. I'm not even on the song or nothing. So we finished the album. I believe it was Murder Music. And then they're like, yo, we're going to do the first single. It was it's going to be this song. But I'm like, yo, I'm not even on the song. They was like, yo, you produced it. I was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Team player. Mm. And then you you didn't even want to just say, I'll just drop some verses. You just left it. What, they said, just... what they said was, what Chris Lighty said was, just do the chorus. Mm. So I was like, all right, fuck it. That's, that's kind of fly, though, from a duo from to another duo. Because right. I always like to see... I, I think that's a genius idea. Hey, I'll be just I'll just do the hook school. Go ahead. <laughs> Knock yourself out. You know what I mean? You know what right. I mean? So I, I'm with you on that. So right. so boom, and then and then Lil' Kim just by politics, y'all brought her in. So what happened was we did the song and we realized we was like, yo, man, we don't got no really no female fans. Like we need some female fans. Who could we get to what female could we get to jump on a remix? And we said Lil' Kim, we all agreed. Mm. Mm. We set up a studio session to do the mm. remix. Mm. She rhymed over it, and the rest mm. was fucking history. I mean, she mm. killed the fucking track. Mm. That's one of the joints. I wish we would have 
rhymed with a female. Maybe we'd have more female fans because we got zero. <laughs> zero. And we, and we still got like this many fans. Like we <laughs> we ain't never had no chicks in our videos. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. we was yo hardcore, but yeah, yo, we yeah. was taking it to the extreme. But yo, have another real quick question is do you play any instruments? Um, I play the keyboard by ear. Uh, I play the keyboard by ear. You know, I've taken uh, lessons over the years and shit like that. You know, I don't have patience for it. So, you know, I just play it by ears. You know, I know how to do the chords and, you know, uh, the circle of fifths and all of that stuff. So, uh, you know, I play the keyboard by ear. Uh, uh, and you don't read music. That's because the only I, reason I... I can read. I can read the music. You know what I'm saying? You I lie. Can read it. You yeah, lie. I, 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 you I, can I, read... I, a little bit, a little bit. I, you know what I'm saying? I, like, because I study music theory. So, you know, I could read it a little bit and, you know, know what this note is and the quarter notes and all of that. And so, yeah. You studied music theory? Yeah, music theory. Like, like I said, but I didn't have patience to finish the course. You know what I mean? So I have to go back. But, you know, music theory is like near and dear to my heart. You studied music theory? Word, word. Tell me just real quick. I know you got to go. What's the first thing I should know about music theory? What is that? Um, the first thing that you should know about music theory is learning the circle of fifths. You know what I'm saying? Once you learn the circle of fifths, then you learn the keyboard and you learn the different scales. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, everything on the keyboard is the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The notes. Yeah. And then it's just up and down the yeah. chord. Like there, there's a certain method to it with the oh. circle of fifths. But once you, once you, once when you dive into it, you'll be like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? This is what I, uh, you know, but you didn't know. You know what I'm saying? You oh, already oh. know it. But now it's putting a label to it every time you touch the keyboard. Uh, for real. You're probably like always getting better too, right? As a producer, you just I'm, that, that's what life is all about. I try. Yeah. Yo, right. when you when you when you produce it, do you cause me as a um, like if I get a beat and uh -huh. um and I get a beat from a producer, I'm like, damn, the, the the core is cool, but I wish I could bring in another producer and I don't know if he'd even be cool with it to add some strings to it and are you open up? Because I know you work with like alchemists or whatever. Yeah, but how, yeah. Are you open to all of that? Son, I, that is like one of the most beautiful things you could do. You know what I mean? Is to collaborate with another producer. Like if you were like, yo, you know what? If I could get homeboy to come over here and we collaborate and he just throw this on it. That's one of the most beautiful things you could do because, mm. you know, now you just, you know, sharing expertise with a, mm. with a fellow, you know what I'm saying? Producer, you know what mm. I'm saying? Mm. And, you, you know, you sharing in this gift. So, you know, I always love to work with other producers, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I'm always learning, you know what I mean? Like, I'm always like, what was that you did? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. Cause they asked me the same thing. They be like, how you did that? Like, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's a healthy mix and it's always mm -hmm. healthy to try to do things like that when you can. Mm -hmm. Each one teach one, you know what I mean? So with that being said, I know you worked with, with Kanye, like when you came in, right? What was your contribution with him as a producer and him being the way he is? How, how did that work out? How did that go down? Oh, well, you know, they called me over there. I went over there, didn't know what to expect, but I knew he, that he was a fellow producer as well. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So when I get over there, um, most of it was him asking me questions. You know what I mean? About, you know, certain things, who I felt was competition in my days. And he already knew my work like how I was doing the snares he was describing the shit that I was doing I was like so he studied it you know what I mean so okay. that was really um flattering for a lack of better words you know what I'm saying to, to know that somebody studied your music and somebody such as him that took it to such a level you understand what I'm saying that that respects the game so much to still be a student so you fly to LA is it in LA yeah you, you fly to LA I fly I fly to LA in fact, I was living in LA, LA at the time. So that was the ironic part about it. You know what I mean? I was back and forth between New York and LA and I okay. happened to be in LA at the time. And I go over there every day for like two months. You know what I'm saying? Just going over there. And even though I only came out with a song and a half mm -hmm. on that particular album, mm -hmm. it was worth it because that's how they work. They do like a million songs, you know what I'm saying? And and you know your shit might not make the cut, you know what I mean? But it, it made the cut, you know what I mean? When you say they, who's they? Um, um, Kanye and his team. Like, his you team. Know what I'm you know okay. What I'm saying? Engineer, you know what I'm saying? It's A and R. Him. Okay. You know what I'm okay. saying? They over Did you work it? Yeah. When you walked in, so you walk into the session. Is it like 
confident have again? No beat, no nothing, or you got a, a, a stash? I went over there with my computer. I, okay. I, 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 I didn't go over there playing games. Like, okay. I, I, I could just make it here right now. Um, though I probably could have did that, and though that probably would have been even better. You know what I mean? Because when you're just doing shit, uh, like, you know, off the cuff. But, you know, in terms of that situation, you feel like you don't want to waste no time. So you want to mm. feel like you want to already have prepared, some, prepared, kind of prepared, already prepared. Kind of prepared. You know what okay, I mean? Okay. Okay. Be over there stuck on stupid for like eight hours trying to make something new, and I, I, I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Time yeah. is money right now. You know what I mean? And everybody yeah. is, they, they shelling out songs like a factory. You know what I'm saying? They don't got time to be stuck on your little problem. You know? Because he has, because he has multiple producers under him, or that he's yeah, just yeah, freelancing yeah. with. I mean, you know, he okay. works with everybody. You know what I'm saying? I so gotcha. like. And some little hot producer in Ohio that we don't even know about that made like uh, 10 platinum hits right now that we don't even know who the fuck he is. He's I'm with you. 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 And and, and he he feeds off that energy and they feed back off of his. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like a movie being around him because it's a fucking a different energy is all for that dude. You know what I mean? And you like, oh shit, all right, these niggas are serious. And they really working. They, they, it's not no bullshit. It's like, it's not like, uh, you know, people might say, oh, you know, Kanye is this or whatever, whatever, whatever. But when mm. you in that studio, yeah, that shit is they they working like the seri- the most serious musicians I ever seen working <laughs> in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. really positive, philosophizing, f- philosophies about shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's yeah. an experience that I take with me to this day when I start making beats, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh shit, you know, I remember they was perfecting that. And I'm like, yo, let me p- do it in my own way. But now it's like, you know, I'm taking my shit to a, a different level. You know what I'm saying? Not better, but just- Yeah, of course. Level, you know, more, you know- um, And what it, was this? And what was the song that you ultimately did over there and the a half? The song that I ultimately did over there was called uh, Famous. You know what I mean? Famous, okay. Did that. He added a couple of more other producers on to the track too as well, you know Because what I mean? that's what I wanted to ask you. So what was the collab now? What'd you bring, the drums? The, 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 right. what? I, I, I brought the sample and the drums, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. The, the drum pattern. I did the drum mm. pattern and I had the sample laid out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I did that, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, that wasn't enough, you know what I mean? Mm. So, so now he, he got the musicians to come in there and start doing some shit on towards the end of the beat. Mm. And then it switches and it, the shit is just crazy. Like the way they dissect it and chop it, like they take what you got, they like, okay, this is fine just for hip hop, but this is <laughs> no, <laughs> this is my Kanye. So now we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do a little bit more surgery over here. And you know, I didn't hear it until later. But and then I did drums on real friends, you know what I'm saying? I just did the drums, that was it. Mm. You know what I mean? But the drums alone, they they was they was they was they was dope. You know what I mean? Mm, incredible, dog. So, um, what? Let's let, let's transition to like, um, cause you from Queens, you a legend. You know what I mean? When when dudes like when you start working with dudes like Fifty, right? Mm-hmm. How how is how is that how is that that connection? Uh, working with people like Fifty is like it's another it's another. See, like I said, you know, I'm always. I'm a fan of the music. So when you working with somebody like that, that took it to a certain level, you know, it's an inspiration. You'd be like, oh shit, all right, this nigga did some shit with this shit. Like I'm mm-hmm. about him, they want to fuck with my shit. Okay, it, 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 you know, boosts you up a notch and you know, and you around people that are serious about music. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like they really, it's, it's no bullshit. It's not, they didn't make it by accident. They mm-hmm. made it because they are serious about the fucking music. And when you get there, it's not a game and you got to get to work. You're making it almost sound like too, like you've been around a lot of people that weren't serious about joint, you know, about yeah. their business, being in the studio, especially. Yeah. yeah. Is, that a, is that a thing you ran I, into I, a lot? Yeah. I've been around a lot of people that wasted time in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I've been around that. Uh, they take the studio for granted. They might sit around drinking and shit like that. And yeah. nah, that's, not, that's not what it's about. I've been you know there. What I mean? it's, it's about getting to, business you know what i mean and, yeah. and, and, and you know and i'm guilty of that you know what i'm saying sometimes so when you see that kind of shit it just reminds you like oh yeah 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 yeah. this is i mean music is supposed to be fun you know what i'm saying yeah. it is fun and you're supposed to have fun doing it but at a certain point it you do got to get serious and hone in on your craft because that's what you do so like 
I, I'm there with you, bro. We and we grown, you know. What I mean, if you yeah. was doing the same thing from back then, you know, so yeah. so so like let's say because we did we worked together, but we yes, did we did. did like um we did microphone master, microphone remix. master. yeah, but did a you, video too. right, right, right. But production mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was you or no. easy mo B. No, that wasn't me. I think that was that was easy, easy mo B, right? Easy mo B, easy mo B, because yeah, because. Mm -hmm. But what I was about to say was rhyming over the beat. I felt like I was rhyming over my shit. Like, you know, oh, yeah. Saying? Oh, yeah. Because I was going <laughs> to ask you, how did you feel about that beat like that? Because I always felt working with mob, it should have been a mob deep beat. You know what I mean? No, I, I felt like I was rapping over my shit. You know what I'm saying? I wish I had done the beat, but I was very, very pleased with the track. At the yeah, time. me too. Me too. Me I was too. like, okay, let's do it. Me too, me too. I always, I just remember like, um, especially during the Hold It Down, because for us, that's the album we worked with a lot of different producers, you know what I mean? But I, I, I don't remember why we couldn't lock you down. You probably was busy because we threw out the net to everybody, you yeah. know what I mean? So I know you were super duper busy, but for me, if anybody asks me, you one of them producers, I'm like, yo, son, would you crazy have, son? You know what I mean? It would have been one of those things or whatever. So, but um, when you, um, when you look back, right, have what are some of the joints, some of the joints that you you're like, yo, this joint never, it was, it almost never seen the light of day that we know right. that we're like, have you wasn't gonna put that song out or that beat out? Give me just one, you know what I mean? I know you I mean, I, I give you one quick one, shook one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shook one's part two. Shook one's part two, word up, shook one's part two. Because you know, I'm in the crib by myself, just making the fucking beats, not really thinking nothing of it. Almost probably was about to turn my fucking nah. beat machine off. Swear to God. Nah, nah. They just came into the crib. They said, what the fuck is this? I was like, oh, you know, said some beat. I was about to turn it off. They said, no, no, no. It was like, yo, this shit is crazy. Word. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And then, and then when you, so, so you hear, okay, so they, 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 dudes around you, you trust their ear. So yeah. when P heard it in the studio, what was it? It's a movie. What, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. P was you just, know. Stab you know, with your nose bone, and you already know, you know what I mean? So for me as an MC, but the beats is where I'm at too, because I'm like, yo, son, we need beats like that. Yeah. So, you know, when you heard it, again, was it? You know, when I heard it, I I, I really didn't think too much. No. No, because I'm going to tell you, because, you know, when you, when you, when you cooking and shit, you know, you don't want to eat after you fucking finish the food. Like, you, you so tired uh. of fucking cooking. You know, you just, you just like, all right, let me pause for a second. So, you know, I, I really don't know. And at the time, you know what I'm saying? I just was still a new producer. You know what I'm saying? I still needed that validation. So I guess the streets validated it for you. Because for say, I, and I can understand, because for me, they asked me, yo, did you know they want a factual going to be that bad? No. You know what I mean? I had 30 songs, son. It was just <laughs> in a line of 30 songs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Is there a joint? So I guess that would fall in maybe a category of a song you put out that you didn't know was going to be that big. Yeah, right. right. Kind of. It was absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I had no idea. Yeah. I'm definitely thankful about it. Is that your day one effect song? Is that your? It has to be. Yeah. Is that your swan song at the end of the show? Is that what y'all do? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, it I got is. you. That's 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 the very last song that we do. Um, when we perform it, you know what I mean? So, and it, it works every time. Yo, have do you still have from those days in the 90s beats that we've never heard? Um, Definitely. That are, that are of that caliber? Matter of fact, that matter of fact, I still got the dat from Stomp Em Out. <laughs> I still got the dat from Stomp Em Out. <laughs> That's crazy. So we, 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 we a, got... I got some shit in the stash that I'm gonna put out one day. I, matter of fact, I got my first demo I ever recorded. Damn, I got you that. Know, you know who's like you, DJ Scratch? Like he got all <laughs> his shit. You know what I mean? Yo, those is you could put those in museums, son. You know what I mean? And and, and you could you could uh, what is it? Sotheby's those, bro? Are you kidding me? Yeah, awesome that. You know crazy. what I mean? But. So you still got old joints like that. You still, and then one day you think you're gonna put out like what, like a, a Havoc beat album? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. But you know, for the fun of it, you know, put out the old demos and shit like that. Just, you know, just to give people a sense of history. Yo, real quick, have I know you 
through the history, which I don't want to talk about the drama shit, but just keep it on the music tip, right? Y'all had the um the, the shit going on with, with pop, right? Yeah. Boom. Now that you're older and you look back, and if I was to ask you, yo, son, who, you know, the typical, who would, dead or alive, who would you have wanted to work with? Is, is Pac one of those people you think y'all would have made some gems? Hell yeah. Yeah, that, yeah and right. It, and it would have been historical, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we definitely would have worked with Pac. Like, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I hope we would have, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, we won't ever get to see that, but uh, I would have loved to have worked with him. Yeah, right, right. And the joints you did on Big, he had already passed, and then you came in after. Or no, was... no, no. He was he was alive. I, okay. I, I went in the studio. He was dead. Yeah. You know I mean, that was okay. when he was working on last. Already uh, the uh, notorious or no? Yeah, something. Ready to die? What, yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, life after death. Life after, after death. Life yeah, after yeah. Death. With the casket, like with the hearse yeah, yeah, truck yeah, yeah. or something. With yeah, the... yeah, life after life after death. Yeah, yeah. But I was okay. in the studio. I was in the studio when. Uh, I did the beats for that. Uh, he was okay. there. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's because I'm thinking it's it sucks. Like you know, what I mean, we we in the music game. You know, what I mean, we ain't in the fight game. Right. You know, what I mean. So for me, I always look at, and I know hip hop is competitive and it's testosterone. I'm I'm there with you. Trust me. I, I would my we did a whole bunch of unnecessary shit too that I thought fucked up a lot of networking and burnt bridges. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, but but. You got to do it. It's hip hop, and and it's what how we came up. You know what I mean? Yep. So yeah, I always would wanted to. I'm, I'm like, damn, have and Pac, y'all would have made some gems. You know what I mean? Oh, you yeah. know who who else in your producer wise? Who would you like to collaborate with? Is Dre or you know somebody you are you even into those type of things? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would I would love to uh, do a collaboration with Dr. Dre for sure. You know what I mean? Um, man, Pete Rock. That's but that's not a that's not a common thing though in hip hop though, is it? it it's, it's not. Mm -hmm. But um, but I do think a lot. No, you know, you know what? A lot of producers do work together. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? On, on, on the low, we probably don't hear too much about it. Mm -hmm. but a lot of producers do do collabs. They do do collabs. I think we got it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I could sit here and ask you a million more questions. Have you know what I'm saying? But Yo, it's been an honor and a pleasure. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't thank you enough to be my first guest on the Producers Podcast. You know what I'm saying? So again, brother, shout out. Yo, what you got going on? I mean, I know the time's changed. Are you working on anything currently or what's cracking? Well, right, right now, I got like a super duper um, surprise for everybody project that I'm working on. I'm not even going to mention it, but you're probably going to hear about it in the next two, three weeks. You know what I mean? Um, uh -huh. um, with, 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 with some like-minded folks, I did a collaboration album with them. But I do I do got an album with uh, uh, Method Man that didn't come out yet that we have yet to uh, release. So, mm. you know, I, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm active. I'm working on mm. a few. Mm. Yo, Ab, I'm here for you, brother. Thank you for being here for me. My brother from another mother. Yes, yes. My brother, yo, the legend himself, super producer. Have it. One love, brother. One. Peace. Peace. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of the Producers Podcast, produced by my guys Raj and Vic at the Creative Content Agency. It couldn't do it without them. Big shout out to them. If you like what you heard today, please share with everybody that likes to hear about these kind of stories behind the beats with these amazing producers. Also, if you happen to be listening on Apple Podcasts, please give us a five-star rate and review. Also, for the crew over at Spotify, you know what I mean? Please do what you do over there. Listen, Follow me at my social site, you know what I mean? At Crazy Drazy, that's K-R-A-Z-Y-D-R-A-Y-Z. -A -A leave me some messages, leave me some questions, leave me some ideas, you know, I'm gonna holler back at you because that's just what we do at the Producers Podcast. Hey, yo, once again, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace.